All right, here's a quick run through of exploit one to help you out. Um, okay, first of all, we need to go to our, here's the project exploit one. We need to open up capture one PCAP. So we go here, we go to activities, go to P234 and capture one. So exploit one is in capture one, exploit two is in capture two, etc. Um, the other thing we want to open up is I want to make sure I open up my CTS training site. Okay. Um, so we'll do admin and password. Because, oh, geez, did I? Okay. Because I need to use this to figure out which page they hacked and it's going to help me search for my packet. All right. So exploit one says you suspect an unauthorized hacker has broken into one of your bank of Virgil guest book web pages and use their script to show their user cookie data. Let's look at the hints. Um, since we're looking inside of a web page, we want to search by content type. Um, also, we want to find the page on Bank of Virgil that manages your guest book. Um, so that way we can search for phrases in Wireshark. Okay, so let's check this out. I'm looking on here really to help me figure out what I need to filter by, because this is too much. Like, look at this. We're 344 packets. Too much. So if I go here, <clears throat> this doesn't say anything about guest book, right? This doesn't, this says ping, right? I don't want ping. This is nothing. This file inclusion, no. <clears throat> User ID, it's an SQL injection. Another one. Uh, I'm not uploading anything. I'm not submitting. And here's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. So when I see this, <clears throat> I want to look for something on this page that is probably not on other pages. Now I could filter by the word guest book, or I could get more specific and filter by like something here. I'm, I don't want to do test because it could be on other pages, but I bet this is not on many other pages. Also, we just clicked through. I could also search by guest book. So when I go up here, one thing I want to use the first hint and filter by HTTP content type. Okay. Now I took down my stuff way down, right? There's way less packets. I still don't want to search through all these. I want to make my window even bigger. Um, so here's where you filter, um, you find certain words. This is where you would either search by guest book or this is a test comment. Oh, let's try guest book. Control F. And I'm going to type in guest book, um, turn it to a string. I can make it case sensitive because if I check over here, I typed it exactly like that. Um, and then make sure you're looking in the packet details. And then you hit find and it jumps to 211, packet 211. So I'm going to look in 211 and see if there's anything suspicious. Here's where it says guest book. I don't see anything yet. This is all the stuff at the bottom of the page. If you started to worry about like hackers, notice down here, that's just that stuff. So I don't see anything on 211 that's suspicious. It did use guestbook, but um, I also could have just done by this is a test comment. Hit enter. Um, it jumps to 234. Let's see if there's anything weird in 234. Now, what would we be looking for? That's the other question. Like, what the heck? Um, remember when we ran scripts on the Bank of Virgil? It was in XSS stored. I think it was that in the training even? It might have been in the training. Let me scroll up. Yeah. I think it was we did yeah xss stored remember we'd write script and document dot write 
stuff like that. Well, in this exploit, it says, okay, someone is getting cookie data. Man, I could have searched by cookie too. That would have been a good thing to search by. Although there's probably cookies on lots of pages. So um, I want to look inside here for a script inside this. See this? Oh, suspicious. That's sus right there. Look at that. We did something like this before. Document.write, document.cookie. It's basically writing, listing the cookies that their website was using. Um, so that's how you find it. So that's part A, taking snips of that. <clears throat> part B is easier. Um, and hopefully you're writing down what you did. Like I'd say, okay, first I put in uh, the filter HTTP content type. Then I went to the web page on CTS that said guest book. Then I found the pages and I put it to packet details and string and you know all those steps. You can go back and listen to the steps. Okay, that's C. B is the, probably the easiest part. It said um, identify the few lines of code that prevent this vulnerability. Save a screenshot of the few lines of code. So imagine I'm doing this for a business. I'm like, hey, you just got hacked um, by people being able to run an XSS um, stored scripting so they could change your web page um, and store your cookie data. So what you need to do, this is pretty easy. Um, I go to down here to view source. Make sure you're on this page. Don't go to a different page because there's different code on different pages. If I go to view source and make this bigger, you can see, hit compare, you can see what a high level of security code looks like. And see how this has little comments here? This is how you sanitize the message input. And here's how you sanitize the name input. Um, if we scroll down to low security, they only had takeout slashes and real escape string. So we're looking for a difference between low and high. If they got hacked, they probably had this low kind of security. Now, if I notice one, two things here under the message input, and I look at high security, they were missing this line, the HTML special characters. They were also missing some stuff from here. Um, let's see, I have one, two, three things. Strip slashes looks pretty much the same. So looks like they only had the first one real escape string, so they're missing two more. So they're missing this one. They're missing, I can, you know, I can hold down control and think highlight more than one. Ah, shoot. So they're missing this line, and then they're missing these two lines. That would make them secure. <clears throat> you take a screenshot of that, maybe screenshot it first, and then you can use your highlighter and screenshot. So that's a breakdown of exploit one. Hopefully um, that helps you out. If you were stuck, document your work. You got to go back and think of what did I do first? What did I do second? What did I do third? Um, and I only want a screenshot of the few lines of code that prevent being able to do an XSS stored attack. You're going to do the same thing on these next two. You're going to be like, hmm. Um, which one of these, you know, on exploit two, you suspect an access that your database has been discovered, unauthorized access to my database. You have to think back, which exploit did we do in the past that involved a database hack? Okay. Um, and, you know, what did that hack look like? Because here you had to know that it used script. When we attacked a database, it didn't use script. Um, and then the third one is, um, we you have to find what we did with ping. And if you look back at our past attacks in like a ping flood attack, look up what our ping flood attack looked like, or our, or our um, we did another one with a ping. And you have to find the web page on um, here, on the, let me close, how do I close this down? Um, 
and you have to find the pages that go with ping and the page that goes with the database attack but the process is still the same hopefully that helps you out um, and gets you on the right track if you're stuck I'll put this online and talk to you later. All right, people. Adios.